morning, church. Good morning. It's beautiful music today, huh? Amen. And the, um, you know, I'm not a real big fond person of the repetition of things, you know, when you just completely repeating the same verse over and over again. I'm not real big on that. That's just my opinion. Okay? But this song we sang, the church has one foundation. I love the, these hymns. Yeah. They're so rich, so thick. I mean, I couldn't even finish singing the song. Just listen to these words. The church has one foundation. Tis Jesus Christ her Lord. It's on page 348. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her and for her life he died. Amen. That is so powerful. Amen. And it just goes on. Elect from every nation, yet one were all the earth. Her charger of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace endued. Though with a scornful wonder men see her sore oppressed, though foes would rend asunder, the rock where she doth rest. Yet saints their faith are keeping, their cry goes up how long, and soon the night of weeping shall be the morning song. Amen. Whew. Mid toil and tribulation and tumult of her war, she waits the consummation of peace forevermore. This is intense. To with the vision, to with the vision glorious, her longing eyes are blessed. Are, I can't even, my eyes are blessed, yes. In the great church victorious shall be the church at rest. Amen. I don't know why we need anything else. That is amazing. Um, you know, the question was asked during Sabbath school or earlier, um, why Jesus hasn't come? Why do you believe he hasn't come? He doesn't have people ready. They're not ready. Yes. It's us, right? Yes. It's this, this church. God has to have this demonstration, right? To the universe. He's, he's promised that this thing is going to be closed up. That this sin will never raise its ugly head again. And that's amazing. But... Um, I think maybe the problem is these broken cisterns that we like to drink from. It was the problem of the past, and I think it still is the problem. Yeah. You know, we have a special message, don't we? I mean, why do, why do we need to go to Babylon? To learn how to bring people into the church. Right? I mean, what's the issue with babbling? Why are they babbling? Because they, what? Left the one foundation. Yeah. Right? One church, one faith, one baptism. Right? Yeah. How many churches are there out there? They're all claiming to have the truth, right? 
I mean, it doesn't say on their front sign, come in here and we're going to deceive you. It doesn't say that. They all believe they have the truth. But somewhere along the path, Babylon came to be, didn't it? Amen. First Corinthians. Good old Paul had a lot to say, didn't he? You know, this, this scripture here is uh, it's an amazing scripture. It says, but of him, right? But of him. Or you could say, by God's doing, right? By God's doing, or but of him, are ye in Christ, who of God is made unto us wisdom, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. Jesus is the all in all. He's the question behind every answer. He is our hope, and He is the glory to come. But He has always been the King He's never failed to be the king, but he has for a time had to put on some priestly robes to deal with this, this world and my sinful heart. Um, I feel like I've been in a desert for a long time now. And, um, it's got to end soon. You know, there's just three kinds of people in the world. Those that are in the desert, those that are going in, and those that are coming out. Jesus was taken into the desert for 40 days. I can't imagine what that must have been like. But I am thankful that he fought the fight and never failed. Jesus has never lost a battle. And he's given us the victory. All we have to do is walk by and pick it up. The blessings are all there. But we're too concerned with the things of this world. I'm amazed by this story of 1,200 people ready for baptism, like, boom. Where is the hunger and thirst? It's not in this country. It's going on all around us, but not here. Y you know, yeah, Laodicea. And we know what God has to say about Laodicea, and it's not very nice. But we can't argue with God. We have to be in agreement with God. And we have to get down on our knees and say, you're absolutely right. Help us. And will he, will he not help us? Of course he will help us. But you know that we're, we're headed for the French Revolution. I mean, if you studied this at all in your life, you can see it all around us. Mm -hmm. I mean, even this whole he, she thing, whatever, you know, everybody can not claim any gender thing. Look back at what happened. This is happening again. How do you tell people their house is burning? Do you do it with a soft voice? No. Do you holler? You know what's wrong with the church? We're, we're, we're
teaching people how to live in a house with smoke in it. We don't worry about the fire. That's what we're doing. We make little workshops on how to just, just, it's okay. It's not okay. When we realize that, maybe we'll get fired up. And maybe that's why I'm being sifted. I really feel like I am. But we're going to come through this thing. Um, let us turn to Jeremiah. If you would. Jeremiah 2. Chapter 2. two evils they have forsaken me the found, fountain of living waters and hewed them out cisterns broken cisterns that can hold no water that's the world brothers and sisters in the church I'm afraid to say it I hate to say it the world the church looks a lot like the world Again in verse 16, chapter 10 and 16. When you get there, just say amen. amen. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Do you feel like you're a sheep? Do you feel like you're sent out with the, into the wolves? Anybody? Do we feel that way? We ought to feel that way because this is what Jesus is saying. This is our commission. Right? <laughs> Behold, I send you forth as a sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Catholics, you know, they just, I don't know, I'm not 
Catholics and all that. But anyways, he's a, he was a Catholic. And the most important thing to him was just taking the host, you know, and you get the good feeling, and then you go out and do everything again. But um, I was trying forever to get him in here. And uh, he did come, you know, a few times, and then um, He said, you know, because, well, way back when, when I first became an Adventist, he, he said I, I joined a cult. You know, because my whole family figured I did. Because they're all Baptists, and most of them. But started out as Catholic, and then Baptist, and then I'm a cultist now. I'm Seventh-day Adventist. <laughs> so, um... Anyways, so my dad told me we were we were talking one day, and he said that um, he wasn't going to be going back to the church to this church because um, you know he was never going to become a Seventh Day Adventist. And uh, I asked him. I said, Dad, I said, do you, do you suppose that um, when you get to heaven someday and you're standing before God or whatever, and he's asking you these questions about why you didn't know. What are you going to tell him? You're going to tell him that um, you didn't know because why? And then he's going to say to you that you had every opportunity you were even there, right? Hearing the message. You were in my house. And I didn't say another word. He didn't say another word. And um, I dropped him off. And when he got out of the truck, he said, oh, I'll see you next Sabbath. <laughs> and he's been here ever since. So praise the Lord. He was baptized. I'm very thankful for that. Very thankful for He that. was baptized just about a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's just fantastic. I'm so happy that that's the case. Um, just this death and sin is horrible. It's horrible. It was never intended to be this way. Understand pride. I, it's sick. It's sick. It's the sickest thing. It's the root of all sin. And I see it in myself. I see it in people. I see it in advertising. I see it everywhere. It's horrible. And if we can be extinguished of pride, Jesus would be first, and sin will be no more. Amen. It's that simple. It's really that simple. Paul, who wrote so much of the Bible, said that he was the chief of sinners. Right? Chief of sinners. Think about that. If you saw yourself as the chief of sinners, how do you look at everybody else? <coughs> Better than yourself. It's better than you. Pride is extinguished. Mm -hmm. This is the way God wants us to go. Amen. <clears throat> and I don't like standing here crying. I'm not real manly. <laughs> but, um, you know, you could cut my legs off and it wouldn't matter. But boy, well, my heart is hurt. It's tough. I'm sorry if I've hurt anybody here. No, no, not at all. No. No. Anyhow. Excuse me. Um, but beware, in verse 17 of Matthew 10, beware of men, for they will deliver you. 
Bless him, Lord. Days are filled with sorrow and care. Hearts are lonely and grieved. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. said he will, 
this thing will wrap up. But you're going to have pure love and pure hate. I uh, always thought that I was strong, but I guess I'm not so strong. Because you are. You're human. Jesus to occupy everything. Amen. Take over. Anyways, let's move forward here when uh, in verse 20. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Amen. Is that awesome? That is, that's what we want, isn't it? That is it. Then verse 22. And ye shall be hated. Do we like to be hated? Not much. No. It doesn't go well with our nature. But this is what it says. You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be what? Saved. 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 Amen. This is not a light thing. You know, when Peter denied his Lord, <coughs> he really thought that he could handle it. Mm -hmm. Didn't he? Yes. You suppose any of you, you think you're stronger than Peter? <laughs> I don't think so. Yes. A little girl. A little girl running down. He denied his Lord. How do we deny our Lord? Ooh. How do we deny? When reviled, we revile again. Yes. We revile afresh. I want to uh, jump down to verse 34. 34 it says, Think not that I've come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but what? A sword. A sword. A sword. is teaching me something. I'm very hard-headed, stubborn, and I'm a lot like Peter. And I just puff my chest up and put my head down and think I can handle it, but I, I can't handle it. Okay. I'm admitting that before I'll be You want to say something, dear? Yes, yes. Go ahead. I think all of us love you just for the humanness that you're showing us right now. Amen. It's, it's amazing. Thank you. Well, praise the Lord. Yes. Um, we all need Jesus. Every single one of us. We're going nowhere without him. Period. You know, um, who you know in this world will get you places. But who you know in the next world to come is going to make sure that you're going to be something. You follow me? Because there is death, real death, and there's a second death, and it's very real. And people all around us are falling to that. What is this sword that Jesus has brought us? Huh? Think not that I've come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. You ever think about what the cross looks like in the ground? <laughs> that look like a big sword? Mm. Yeah. You ever think about it that way? Mm. Take the S off of there. What do you got? The word. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. 
I'm going to read you a little something. That these words are really small, so my glasses aren't as good as they used to be, or my eyes or something. I don't know, but I'm going to try. Christ declared, I came not to send peace, but a sword. Why? Because men would not receive the word of life. 